Minister. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Great to have you here for our first press conference of the afternoon of day two, World Economic Forum on Africa 2016. Fascinating amount of discussion so far. As you know, we're looking here at extending the narrative of the fourth industrial revolution, discussing how digital transformation can connect Africa's resources. Africa's resources, basically, is the most valuable one as its people. There's no, there's no better way to build a future for this continent than to develop and invest in the talents and futures of the youth and the young population. So delighted with that in mind to be here moderating this press conference on how we can foster digital literacy as a basic skill for African youth. Learning more about Africa Code Week and other efforts as well that have been ongoing by our panel. I'm delighted to be able to be joined by Andrew Waititi, the Managing Director, SAP East Africa. Next to Andrew, Jean-Philbert Nsengimana, Minister of Youth and ICT here in Rwanda, and I believe a young global leader, a member of one of our Global Agenda Councils, a great constituent, a great friend of the forum. Arnold Kamanzi, a trainer, Africa Code Week. No better way of figuring out how it is, what are the difficulties, what are the challenges of, of, of imbuing these, uh, these new skills when asking the people who are training, the people who are being trained. Aphrodite Mutangana, my friend, the head of the general manager of K-Lab, here in Kigali. You may know K-Lab. This week they launched their Fab Lab, the future of distributed manufacturing, a very, very key uh, component of Africa's digital transformation. Lastly, Sunil Genes, SAP's Africa Government Affairs and CSI Director, who will be hopefully telling us a bit about the future plans for this. So with this in mind, we don't have a huge amount of time. I'd very much like to hand the floor to Andrew to uh, introduce the concept of Code Week. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome again. Uh, so I'll get straight to the point. Uh, I think it, it, it starts with uh, a point that was made yesterday by uh, the President of Rwanda, His Excellency uh, uh, President Kagame, around the import of ICT as an investment, as a base for investment for the development of Rwanda, uh, where many people may have questioned why ICT. I think he saw the future of ICT in creating uh, the basis for the growth of the entire economy. So as SAP, uh, we share the same vision and uh, we feel that the Africa Code Week is, is a, a small seed to plant in providing uh, the youth of tomorrow uh, with a choice as to defining what their destiny is. In a very uh, short space of time, we can provide them uh, access and tools to start learning about uh, developing uh, programs uh, through coding. And what this does is, is allow them to then determine uh, their own destinies in ways that they probably didn't have before. So in short, that's what Africa Code Week is. It's something that we are doing across the continent. Uh, last year, we were able to touch uh, over 80,000 uh, kids across this continent. And this year, we hope it will even be bigger. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, uh Mr. Minister, hey, you, um, I'd, I'd love to hear why you got involved in Code Week, but I'd also like to hear maybe some wider context as to what you're doing here in Rwanda. A lot of people are asking me, as the media spokesperson here, why are we here in Rwanda? One of the reasons, of course, is it's investing in its youth. Thank you so much. I, I think uh, this has uh, to, to, to go with our uh, overall <laughs> development strategy. We are a country in a hurry. We are a country that is uh, on a journey to transform its uh, people and its economy. We are moving from agriculture-based economy to uh, a knowledge-based economy. And uh, investment into ICT is, uh, is critical. Uh, we've been investing heavily into infrastructure. We invest in, um, in an environment that is able to, um, to take priv attract private sector investment. But most importantly, we've been investing in our people. There is no way that anybody can achieve this digital transformation that everyone is talking about if it's not driven by the people. And here we are looking at two types of people. There are people like us on this panel, except probably Arnold, uh, who are the digital migrants. Uh, somebody was uh, saying yesterday that they had their first driving license before touching a computer, mm -hmm. but nevertheless they are leading big multinational IT companies. But also the young generation who are the digital natives, who I believe have even a bigger opportunity to play a, a, a bigger role in this uh, digital transformation. It's about their future. In Davos, uh, somebody said, I think it's Professor Schwab who said that nobody knows 
what the 60% of the jobs that are going to be here in 20 years will look like. No one knows. Because the people who are going to create those jobs are not yet born. And for those who are born, the young people of, uh, of, of Rwanda, having an opportunity like the Africa Code Week, really learning this new skill at a very tender age so that it becomes the new standard of basic literacy. I think it's an opportunity that is an unprecedented and I'd like to recognize SAP for taking the lead for your leadership on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Arnold, you're, you're the only digital native here, so uh, the burden falls on you to tell us more about the work you're actually doing and the, you know, the, the challenges and, 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 and the, the, the uniqueness of the, of the work that you're doing training people during mm -hmm. Code Week. Uh, thank you. Uh, I joined the Africa Code Week, uh, which started in Rwanda on October 2015, uh, where we trained about uh, 800 students. And uh, being also from a background of being a computer scientist, I'm a programmer, I myself, and uh, the vision of Africa Code Week is being teaching these young kids and this young generation uh, the big basics of programming at, uh, at, uh, as it is where the world is moving. So I took interest in it and I joined the Africa Code Week. Uh, so my experience has been uh, a good one, uh, given that these kids, uh, some of them whom we're training is their first time using the computer. So as has been saying, some uh, have uh, had their first driving license before they even touched a computer. I think I, I, I experienced this within these trainings. And not only giving them the basics of about uh, programming, also we are teaching them how to use computers and opening up their mind to the world of programming. So uh, in these trainings, we are using a program called Scratch, uh, which is uh, designed by MIT in a very simple way that kids could understand uh, be introduced to the world of programming and everything. Uh, so I think it has been a good experience and we're still equipping these kids uh, to the basics of programming, yes. Has it, has it changed, has it affected you going through this process? What have you learned from this process? Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, I have been touched actually, uh, knowing that I have skills that people could use actually. And also uh, uh, in the past I've been thinking, how can I pass this all also to the younger generation as it where, where it's going? And uh, I didn't have a clue, but actually by joining the Africa Code Week, I saw how we, we could pass this out uh, to the kids. And also, yeah, it's a good actually to help the community with the skills you have and uh, to get these kids where they need to be with uh, this digital world uh, we're moving in. Uh, and what kind of impact are you seeing on the, on the kids after they've been through, the, uh, uh, at the end of Code Week? Yes, uh, the impact is, uh, firstly, they, they, they are now open to their computers. First, you can find the kids uh, being fear of even touching a computer. And then after the sessions, they are now like, uh, we can do anything with the computer now with the basic skills. So it's impacting them. Uh, also, as we will be going on and teaching uh, the trainers, I, I think uh, it's going to be a good impact to the kids, and given that also they are introduced to the computers. So I think it's a big impact, yes. Thank you. Aphrodite, we, uh, we met back in February, of course, around that time. You were involved in rolling out Code Week in, in Rwanda. Tell us about your experiences here on the ground and what you've been able to achieve. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in October, as Arnold said, uh, we trained 800, more than 800 kids using ICT buses. You know, it's teaching something new in different environment. And uh, we, we saw that it was kids liked it so much, we decided to organize another one in December to reach out to students who were in, uh, in holidays. And uh, we trained more than 400 kids at Caleb. And uh, in March, also we uh, we train trainers because we saw that uh, it's uh, we will be training many kids in Rwanda, and our target was so high. And we said, why not train trainers who will be helping to spread the knowledge? And uh, in March, we trained more than 30 trainers. And uh, then last month in April, we said, you see, uh, there is a mo like he for she movement, and uh, we said, why not I I involve gender? Last, la last month, we trained more than eight, 107 teenager refugee girls in different uh, camps in Rwanda. Y you know, we introduced these computer skills to even to refugee girls. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and Sunil, 
you've been involved very much in the genesis of this, of this plan. What are your future? What's, uh, what's, what are we going to expect in the future? Thanks very much. So um, we launched Africa Code Week here during the World Economic Forum. And uh, people like Afrodis were involved in taking some of our teams out into the rural areas up in the north. And just standing there with the young children, looking at them, touching for the very first time a computer, and going through a process of digital literacy at that level was quite incredible. Uh, the tagline of uh, Africa Code Week is, coding is a new language, and every child deserves to learn this. Our plans are focused on increased partnership with multilateral agencies, uh, with the Africa Union in particular, with governments across South Africa to ensure, uh, South Africa and the rest of Africa, to ensure that we have a strong partnership and that this program can grow across the entire African continent in uh, the years to come. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, last year we had a target of 20,000 uh, youth to be trained, and we hit a target in excess of 80,000 in 10 countries. Um, the focus for the year coming up, this is year 2016, is to go into 30 countries with a, with a lofty number of 150,000 youth to be trained uh, in three categories, 8 to 12, 13 to 17, 18 to 24. And essentially, the, um, the, the, the younger groups will be trained on MIT Scratch, which is a freely available software, and the older group will work on uh, web-based pro programming, which has been developed and is readily available uh, on the SAP MOOC, as we call it. Now, uh, the United Nations has worked on the sustainable goals, and it's our firm belief that in order to achieve this, we need to create digital natives that are able to take advantage of the global economy while sitting in any part of Africa. They could be in rural areas programming, and essentially in time to come, we could expose them to markets out there through some of our supplier bases that we have through our partners and our customers to then program applications which will be worthwhile for the utilization for commercial enterprises. And this essentially ensures that we address a number of things, matters of population migration, matters of ensuring that uh, the rural areas of uh, the world, and in particular Africa, uh, are given its rightful place on the global map. In the future, we will see changes that uh, we've never seen, unprecedented changes. The only way we can take care of the future is to plan for it. And by uh, enabling these young uh, uh, people to be empowered through digital programming, we are giving them skill sets which will determine the future, from space travel, from matters of digital robotics, to education and e-learning. So I'll pause at that point. Thank you, Oliver. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Happy to take any questions from the floor. Lady here, we have a microphone, please. Um, um, my question is... Could you, uh, uh, Mom, could you re remind us your name, please? Okay, my uh, name is Maggie Mutesi from Randa TV, and my question goes to uh, Janice. I hope that's the right pronunciation and why it's true. Uh, we tr Randa ex exceptional put aside, you know, all these people we're thinking of training across the continent. We are looking at solutions, but not looking at the challenges. Uh, is it realistic for us to think we are going to transform the continent when some countries don't have the right infrastructure and policies in place to enable the innovators, you know, use the technology to transform the continent? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, uh, Andrew, if I could start by addressing that. Thank you very much for that question, and, and it's a pertinent question. This is about covering the bases. What we've seen in the recent past is that there's increased focus on the African continent by uh, big blocks, G7, the African Union itself, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and uh, more particularly now you're seeing the evolution of the Smart Africa program, which has been initiated, initiated in recent times to create a digital Africa into the future. That collaboration, we've been talking to key players within that organization, works very closely with African presidents. In fact, they have 10, if not 11, African presidents on the board. And it's our intention to work very closely with governments to create a partnership for the creation of the public good, not the commercial good. And I believe if private sector and governments across the world, together with the NGO sector and other stakeholders, social entrepreneurs, collectively work together, there is no reason why Africans cannot take a rightful place on the global stage. There is no reason why we cannot supersede 
and take advantage of bleeding edge technology which other people have gone through repeatedly to get to an optimum solution. Uh, in regards to connectivity, um, we are talking about transforming the continent through digitalization, but we have 650 million <coughs> Africans who do not have access to electricity. 68% are not connected, um, mobile broadband connection. So um, isn't this a challenge? Give me the feasibility, give me your view on this. Sure, and thank you very much. Uh, it is a challenge, and I think through challenges such as this, uh, this is where you find some of the most innovative ideas. There are a number of organizations who have met even in this uh, World Economic Forum who are doing new and different things in terms of creating uh, access to, to data and, and, and uh, broadband access uh, using things like white space. I believe uh, there is one organization, uh, Microsoft, uh, the For Africa Foundation that is driving uh, the use of new methods of getting, you know, Wi-Fi access very, very cheaply. This is at less than a, the cost of, of a dollar a month uh, to, to people anywhere, irrespective of where they are. Uh, power, of course, is going to be uh, another challenge, the, the secondary challenge. But the way this is being addressed, not just by uh, providing new sources of energy, is working also with the people who create uh, the, 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 the devices that we use. So it's not about looking at computers in computers per se. If you look at what is happening, for example, here in Rwanda when you went out to, to, to digitize your schools, the devices that were created were specific to the needs uh, of the environment. And these are the kind of partnerships I think that we need to challenge ourselves. We cannot take what is working uh, in, in, in uh, let's say, a more developed country and say that the same thing is going to work here in, in Africa. So we have to look at our particular challenges and then with the partnerships that we can build in forums like this, uh, really address those challenges. Can I ask that question? Okay, my third question, the, the last one. We'll go to uh, Honorable Minister Sanjimana and uh, the two gentlemen from uh, uh, the, the initiative, yeah. yes. Um, a lot of people would say that the solutions or the innovations come up with now are not are tailored for the African solutions. I want you to challenge that. Well, I, I think uh, that's, that's uh, as you say, uh, it's a position that needs to be challenged because, you know, where are these young men uh, finding problems to resolve? It is in their community. They are not dreaming about a problem that might exist somewhere in, in the U.S. and design a solution for that. So when you look at what uh, Frodis, for instance, himself, who could have said it himself, the kind of challenge he's trying to resolve in the health sector, in the pharmaceutical industry, people not being able to locate the drugs that has been pre prescribed to them and, and get quick access to, to, to those life-saving medicine. This is not a foreign problem. It's, it's an African problem, but also could be a global problem. So, in fact, let's depart from that idea that there is something called African problem that is not a global problem or a global problem that's not an African problem. And what we've been even encouraging our young people to, 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 to do is to think global and act local. Kamanzi, these innovations, including you, Honorable Minister, should be able to get our people out of poverty. However, uh, most innovators, I would love to hear from the young men, though. Um, we would say that innovation should be, you know, it should, it's entrepreneurship. Is this going to get our people out of poverty? Is it bringing money to you? Uh, I would say... Uh, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. a good yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think, I think a, a, a nice way of looking at, okay. at this is what, what impact do we see from kids and young people who go through this? And are they... Are they, is it helping them find gainful employment? Are they, are they, are they improving their livelihoods after, after training initiatives such as this? Okay. Uh, if you look uh, in the context of Africa Code Week, uh, uh, we are training kids from age of 7 to 14, actually. Uh, so uh, regarding, uh, let's put aside the kids. Uh, actually, I myself, uh, I have a startup called Take Avenue 137, and uh, um, we are trying to solve, I mean, uh, issues regarding this uh, creative, I mean, digital worlds. So we are currently, and actually we, we have started like making a living out of it. So I'm, I'm a living example of it. And currently we have like two products on market. So, so we, we, which says uh, 
we are trying uh, to, to create solutions for, for our society. So if you, when I get back to uh, Africa Code Week, uh, the kids we are training, this is not the kind of uh, thing, we are preparing them actually for this uh, digital creation. For, because if we train the kids from uh, age of seven to 14, I think they will be, they'll get to the age of 18 while actually trying to create uh, uh, these innovations. Because if you look in the context of other world, like uh, European kids, uh, and you see the kind of games they create with this program you are training with kids, it's really quite amazing. So I think if we try, if you are uh, preparing these kids uh, to get there, they certainly make money out of it, yes. Did I answer your question correctly? Okay. Africa, see what about yourself? Yes. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, about the issues, uh, you know, I started my own business in 2012. Uh, I was working at FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. Then I decided to leave. And uh, now I have my own business. And apart that, I'm also managing KLAB. When I joined KLAB, I was just a tenant. I just had an idea. And uh, so, uh, <coughs> why did I create, why did, did I start business? Because I had a dream. I wanted to, you know, to solve some problems. And uh, yes, I have official reasons why I started business, business in health sector. I have official reasons and unofficial reasons. The unofficial one, I wanted to be a medical doctor, but I didn't get the chance. I decided to create my own way to be who, uh, who I wanted to be. And uh, the other thing, the official reasons, in 2011, we had 191 specialists in the country of 10 million. And uh, mobile penetration now is more than 78%. So I decided to create a linkage between doctors and, uh, and uh, using the, 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 the infrastructure and the materials available. Uh, let me give you another example uh, of initiative we started in Cheek Initiative to help elderly survivors of genocide. Uh, once I visited, uh, I visited, I'm used to, to help needy people and poor people. Uh, once I visited a mom who called Karitasi, she's eight, six now. She had nine children. Eight of them were killed during the genocide and the surviving one was raped and contracted HIV. In 2000, she passed away. Now that, that mom cannot walk, cannot do anything. So I said, we have technology here. What can we do? I created a mobile crowdfunding where you just take your phone, your dial 654, and I deduct that amount on your airtime, 50, 65, 100. You see, we are not only looking on money, but we are also looking to solve problems. Then uh, in 2014, we managed to, to raise 1.7 million Rwandan francs, which is about $2,000. And last year, we managed to, 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 to raise more than five, five million. So you see, it's something increasing. We are using technology to, to solve some problems, you know, we are seeing in our community. Thank you. Maggie, if I may, I've got a couple of questions. Can I go ahead? Yes. Uh, I exercise my right as moderator. Um, Andrew, one for you. To what degree is this CSR, to what, and to what degree is it core business, getting these kids trained? And uh, Mr. Minister, if I may ask you a question, which is inspired by one of the co-chair's comments this morning about business driving education and, and, and training. And I'm wondering if you could give us some thoughts on how, where we're at in terms of forging true public-private cooperation, collaboration, to get meaningful education for young people. Maybe Andrew sure. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. With, uh, as far as SAP goes, uh, Education and entrepreneurship are the, the, the basis of what we do from a CSR perspective, and it ties back very well from a strategic perspective, uh, because if you think about it, if we develop the entrepreneurs and businesses of the future uh, on a digital platform, which is what we as SAP stand for, these are most likely going to be our customers. Uh, this, uh, from a business perspective, uh, we have more people who are coming into, uh, into uh, the economy understanding the impact that digitization can have in not just what they do, but how they solve problems in, in, uh, in, the, in the social areas in which they operate. So from an SAP perspective, uh, it lines up at 100%. Thank you. Honorable Minister. Well, the question on, on PPP. You know, when I l I've been part of different discussion panels already uh, during this conference, 
and uh, I realized that uh, one thing in, that I find in common in every one of those discussions, I, I find a strong belief that um, the power of technology to really shape a better, a better future for, for, for everyone. Everyone believes in it. Second thing that is, is I find an excitement, really almost palpable excitement that we in fact can tap that potential that technology presents today and close all sorts of gaps that we've been seeing, whether it is gap in access to technology, infrastructure, you know, education, gaps in uh, rural versus urban areas, men versus women, you can feel that people now have come to this point to believe that we, in our lifetime, in our generation, can eliminate those gaps. And thirdly, I find a conviction that only partnerships, effective partnerships, can do this. Even on this panel, when Sunil spoke and, and then Andrew, everyone from the private sector is speaking a language of creating public good. But if you listen to the heads of, you know, to the president and the president of the African Development Bank earlier on today, you find that the private sector is speaking about, the, the public sector is talking about having the private sector do good and do well and make money and make profits, but at the same time uplift people's lives. So is this the first time that we are seeing now these two sectors exactly speaking, you know, the same language and in fact getting this sort of empathy where everyone speaks about the good of the other, I think we are on a very uh, a good way and uh, we will make these challenges history. It's the first time we're talking together, talking the same language. So, would you have any comments on that from your side as a, as a, a business leader looking to, you know, talking and working with governments? Absolutely. And we must commend our Minister for ICT here in Rwanda, who has been working tirelessly with his colleagues, the Minister of Education, and uh, I believe he has also touched base with President Kagame about this and how all of these little facets contribute to the ultimate vision that uh, President Kagame set for Rwanda uh, some time back. Now, uh, SAP uh, is a company that started almost 45 years ago by five entrepreneurs. And that entrepreneurial spirit has remained in the company for years and years and years, including up to this stage. Ultimately, the minister spoke about creating public good. SAP, its partners, and its customers through collaboration are committed to creating this public good and to ensure that Africa rises to its rightful place on the globe. We've heard Howard Buffett yesterday, uh, a, a global billionaire, a, a philanthropist, somebody who has a big interest in Africa, talk about this in other terms, in terms of what he's doing in terms of conservation. Technology is pervasive in every facet and in every industry. And if we get this right, for once in our lives as humanity, we'll be planning for success in the future with the new generation that comes along. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. We're fast running out of time. Indeed, we have run out of time. All, all that is left is uh, for me to thank you all for joining us here. It's fascinating. It's great work. Highly commendable. I wish you every success in the future. Thank you for joining us here in the room, and thank you for watching us live online at weforum.org. This session is now closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.